Hi everybody, Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And I want to spend just a few minutes talking with you about the business continuity and crisis management concerns, the security and safety concerns that you may be thinking through following the terrorist attack by Hamas in Israel that happened just a few days ago on October 7th. During this attack, assailants breached a number of security barriers, uh, unleashed a rocket barrage, followed by infiltration into military bases and border towns, and this resulted in significant casualties and really a ripple of fear across the region and now uh, a, a large scale military conflict that I expect will go on for some time. The magnitude of this attack and its methodical execution um, really sent a stark reminder to the global business community about the necessity of robust business continuity and crisis management strategies. So in the wake of this attack and the turmoil that has been unleashed yet again in the Middle East, I want to talk through just some crucial steps that we've been talking with our clients about, things you should consider in order to safeguard your operations and ensure the well-being of your employees and your other stakeholders. The first one is to make sure that if you have employees or their dependents that are in the areas of conflict or potential conflict zones, you should immediately look at developing and communicating clear evacuation plans for your employees and their dependents out of those conflict zones. You should also consider restricting travel to those areas. So imposing travel restrictions to and from affected areas other than your evacuation efforts until stability is restored. You can utilize um, virtual communication tools to maintain continuity of operations in the interim. You obviously will want to look at enhancing your security measures, ramping up security measures at um, your facilities, especially in the regions that are prone to turmoil or conflict right now. And where appropriate, coordinate with local law enforcement and consider adding additional security or off-duty police or other steps um, from a protection standpoint. And then it's also important to revisit and review your business continuity and crisis management plans in the wake of this attack. You should evaluate and update those plans to make sure they align with the current threat landscape and where appropriate, engage in some scenario-based training or exercises to really enhance your organizational readiness for potential disruptions in that area. Part of this is going a layer deeper and looking at critical third-party vendors or critical suppliers or others that you may have in that space where you need to consider the impacts that can have on your operations. For example, if you're reliant upon a critical third-party service provider and that service provider is located in a potential conflict zone, I would start having those conversations with that, those processes, those teams that own those processes inside of your company and your third-party suppliers now so that you're prepared in the event of a disruption. Staying on top of the situation involves reviewing open source intelligent or OSINT. You can look at tools like what's being discussed on X or Twitter, for example, in order to collect, analyze, and interpret data from publicly available trusted sources to stay abreast of those evolving threats and regional stability. You should also consider um, if you've had employees that have been affected by this incident, what is the psychological support, your, what, what support might your EAP program be able to provide to them um, in order to, uh, or I would encourage an open dialogue to address concerns they may have and provide information on available support resources that they can draw upon. You want to make sure that you're communicating clearly during these times, so maintaining clear and timely communication with all of your stakeholders in order to manage expectations and provide updates on this evolving situation and your business operations. And then where appropriate, you want to engage with local communities and authorities to contribute to these broader response efforts. Um, this helps you foster goodwill and demonstrates good corporate responsibility. In the long run, this is an opportunity to really think about your resilience building. Uh, thinking about investing in technologies and processes that can help enhance your future resilience to these kind of external shocks, enabling a quicker recovery and continuation of operations following the crisis. These attacks underscore to us the imperativeness of a well-structured crisis management framework of having solid business continuity plans and a good threat intelligence system. 
We think companies that embrace a proactive and adaptive approach right now um, are companies that can navigate through these these kind of adversities, both ensuring the safety of your team and your facilities and being able to safeguard your critical business operations. If we can help you in any way, reach out to us at contact at brightpath.com. I hope you found these tips valuable. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.